Hello fellow YouTube friends, followers, fools and flabbergasters, my name is Mason and it is time for another Guild Wars 2 easy and flexible build guide. The goal of this guide is to enable you as much flexibility and low switching costs between PvE game modes on a particular class and elite specialization. This means that whenever possible I will use only one set of gear with slight alterations. To accomplish that goal I suggest gear that allows for high damage and the necessary defense or support is accommodated for through traits, food and skill changes only. That usually also means that the build is not necessarily always the best in slot choice, but it will pass a certain DPS threshold under the usual raid buffs and get you through pretty much all open world content on your own if needed. Today's class of choice is the Guardian and the lead specialization is the Willbender. We're going to discuss three different build variants in open world Roma, a conditioned DPS build and an alacrity Willbender. Build links are as always in the description. Now the alacrity variant will be explained in a dedicated section towards the end of the video. As a starting point, let's discuss some pros and cons. The build has quite high and bursty Condi damage, with around 37k on the Golem with a very easy rotation. It's also very mobile and has decent range because it uses Virtues and Scepter in combination. Like other Guardian builds, the build is quite flexible in terms of utility it can bring. On the other hand, the build is quite squishy without gear changes, because it has low passive healing built into its kit. Compared to a Firebrand, it also has quite weak boon support, it only supplies a bit of might through the Scepter symbol. Virtues will also force you into melee range, that can be detrimental whenever range is required. Alright, it's time to burn the heretics. As a baseline of the guide, let's go through the general playstyle of Willbender. Like all Guardians, Willbender has access to Virtues, which you can find right above your weapon skills. Unlike Firebrand and Dragon Hunter, however, these Virtues are all movement based on Willbender, and they will override each other when activated. This makes Willbender quite mobile since you have free access to quite a few movement abilities and shadow steps in your kit at all times. On top of that you gain physical abilities, many of which are also movement based. We're only going to use two of them frequently, but they all have some utility so it's worth taking a look at them. The focus on lots of movement based abilities is not always beneficial though as I said before, because some of these skills will inevitably move you into melee range even at times where it's not necessarily desirable. Nonetheless, Willbender is a pretty straightforward spec to play in PvE, both in open world and group content if you choose the right gear and traits. Now how do Virtues on Willbender work? You can always have one Virtue active and for the one you have, a passive effect will happen every few outgoing attacks. That means that if you activate Rushing Justice and then Flowing Resolve right after, Rushing Justice will be replaced and only the passive effect of Flowing Resolve occurs. That makes the playstyle quite tactical since you need to decide whether you want Offense through Rushing Justice or Defense through Flowing Resolve or Crashing Courage. First of all, Virtues cause you to emanate Willbender Flames in different shapes when used. With the traits of choice, Virtues will also apply Swiftness and Resolution to you when activated. Let's go through the three Virtues and then discuss Weapon and Utility skills. Rushing Justice is the main Virtue for damage. It's a Gap Closer ability that does damage and applies burning upon impact. Grants a light aura and a couple boons. With the traits of choice, it will further make every third of your attacks apply burning in an area around you. This is a major staple of your damage and is always priority number one to maintain. Virtue number two is Flowing Resolve. This one is an evade and another charge ability. It's also an ammo skill. It will heal you upon impact and every 5 attacks while active. You should only use this to cover downtimes on rushing justice or whenever you need a little bit of additional healing. It also grants a bit of alacrity and regeneration as a nice gimmick. In open world you should also squeeze in casts of crashing courage or use it to block incoming attacks with Aegis. It also grants you stability and protection, so it is a great defensive or round 2 that it can save your life. I like to cast this first and then Flowing Resolve so that you gain the initial boons of this and then get healed while they're up. The two latter Virtues can also be used to quickly reposition yourself whenever it is needed. So far for the Virtues, let's continue with the weapon skills. The weapon choice for Willbender are Scepter and Torch. While Torch is the standard go-to weapon for condition-based Guardian builds, Scepter is not really a Condi weapon. In fact, Willbender doesn't even have access to a dedicated main hand weapon for the condition playstyle. That's not really a problem though, because Rushing Justice makes every few attacks apply burning anyway, so that even power focused weapons work without problems. To be completely honest, having a dedicated condition weapon would make it kind of overpowered. If you want to go for the benchmark rotation eventually, you can add a sword to the build, but we're not going to cover that in this guide video. Scepter also has the advantage that it makes you more flexible in terms of positioning since it's ranged and is also the strongest weapon to pair with Torch if you don't want to weapon swap. The auto attack is pretty basic, it's just a slowly traveling orb that does a bit of strike damage. Not much to say about this, it's decent damage as a filler between other skills. 
Symbol of Punishment is the dedicated symbol for the Scepter, and it does great damage over time in the AoE it creates. It also grants might to allies within the circle. Cast this off cooldown if possible, even though it has a quite low priority. Chains of Light is Scepter skill number 3. It immobilizes the enemy and applies vulnerability. The damage on this is pretty low, so it's not used for the damage it does. You should use the CC it applies in open world and group content though whenever it is needed. Moving on to Torch skills. Torch 4 is the main weapon skill for damage, Zealot's Flame. This skill is instant cast and can thus be used during other animations or actions and applies burning every second around you. It also grants you access to Zealot's Fire, the secondary skill. This is a ranged skill that will apply 3 stacks of burning to the target. Now, one would think that using a secondary skill would stop the AoE burning applied around you, but it does not. So there's no downside of casting this early. This skill also has a nice interaction with the trait Radiant Fire. Radiant Fire will apply Zealot's Flame to you with a 10 second cooldown when you perform a critical hit. That also means that you possibly get a second charge of Zealot's Fire, which is very nice. On other Guardian builds you can time the two instances of Zealot's Flame very well, but Will Bender uses a trait, Restorative Virtues, that dynamically reduces weapon skill cooldowns when Virtues trigger. This trait is the reason for why you don't really have a static rotation, since it's hard to actually plan when skills will be usable again. Scepter 5 is Cleansing Flames, a long channel that applies strike damage and burning, but it only applies burning on the final hit. This will trigger Rushing Justice fairly quickly though as well, so it's not as bad as it looks. It also cleanses conditions off of allies, so that's a nice side effect. You only want to use this, however, at times when all other skills are on cooldown for the time it takes to cast this, since it's the weakest contributor to your damage overall. We'll be going through the skill prioritization later on in the rotation section. Moving on to utilities now. As the healing skill, I always go with Litany of Wrath. This makes you basically immortal as long as you keep dealing damage for the time it is active. It has a 25 second cooldown and lasts 6 seconds, so you can have a pretty decent uptime on this. To survive, you only have to cover the downtime of this with other defense like dodges, flowing resolve or crashing courage. Since Scepter is ranged, you can also just kite around for a while and just use the ranged skills. But you typically have to use Rushing Justice on cooldowns, so you keep applying burning on the Scepter skills, which puts you into melee range frequently anyway. Next up, we have Whirling Light and Purging Flames. These apply lots and lots of burning in an AoE radius. Whirling Light is a combo finisher and Purging Flames is a fire field, so if you use Whirling Light after Purging Flames, it will apply additional burning through burning bolts. Whirling Light applies weakness, so it has some soft CC built into it. Purging Flames is the highest damage skill aside from Rushing Justice, so you definitely want to use it off cooldown. Be aware that it is a stationary AoE though, so you have to keep enemies inside to make full use of it. But it's also ranged, so that's even better. After that I always slot the Signet. For group content, Signet of Wrath is ideal. It grants 180 condition damage. Don't use this actively since that's a large DPS loss for a fairly short immobilize in return. In open world I like to use Signet of Judgment. It decreases all incoming damage by 10%. It's also a stun break that burns foes upon activation so it's a nice emergency skill in case you get CC'd because you also get some kind of damage out of it. For the Elite you have two options. Heaven's Palm is the default skill to use since it applies heavy CC damage in an AoE radius around you. Paired with another CC skill like Heal Crack, you break most CC bars immediately. The second option is Feel My Wrath. You should only use this when you know that quickness or fury uptime is lacking or when CC isn't needed. That shouldn't happen in group content and Heaven's Palm is better in solo in 99% of cases so I rarely slap this on. If you want to replace a utility skill, it should always be Whirling Light, since it's the weakest of them. Moving on to gear. The gear for Condition Willbender is a mix of Grieving and Vipers. The reason why we're not going for full Viper is that you only apply Burning as a damaging condition, and you can get the condition duration required for the cap of that, of 100%, by other means. You want to include Viper gear up to the point where you reach 15% overall condition duration. The 85% on top come from Burning Duration and Condi Damage food, it's called Fishy Rice Bowl, Balthazar Runes and the trait Radiant Fire. Grieving is nice because Willbender actually has good power coefficients and it provides the best trade-off between Condi damage and strike damage. Around 25-30% to of your damage come from strike damage so this is pretty significant. The low requirement on Condi duration is pretty nice because it makes you quite liberal on the gear choices. The Grieving pieces can be replaced by basically any combination you like as long as it has condition damage as a major attribute. 
I like to run dire pieces instead of grieving for harder open world content since it's very cheap to come by and will make you a lot more tanky through toughness and vitality. It will also increase your condi damage over grieving because power of the virtuous converts the increased vitality into condition damage and the spread across 3 stats on dire isn't as large compared to 4 on grieving. You sacrifice a chunk of your strike damage but that's not a big deal. The rune should always be Balthazar. The sigils are Bursting and Torment and the consumables are the Fishy Rice Ball and the Toxic Focusing Crystal for maximum damage output. If you want the budget option for the Torment sigil, you can run Earth instead for a small DPS loss, a bit more in AoE. Another cheap variant for sigils and food would be to slap on a Smoldering sigil instead of the Torment sigil, use Condi damage and expertise food and aim for around 10% overall Condi duration. Now that we've got skills and gear covered, we can talk about traits and specializations. The specializations are set in stone. You should never use anything other than Virtues, Radiance and Willbender. As usual, I won't go through every trait in detail, but just discuss the ones that actually affect the playstyle. Let's start with Virtues. Virtues empowers basically everything about your Virtues, but it also increases your condition damage and grants consecrations, so Sanctuary or Purging Flames, reduce cooldowns and longer durations. Most important for the playstyle are the reduction in cooldown on your virtues and the increased frequency and AoE trigger on Rushing Justice's burning effect. This is an essential part of your damage, so you should never swap this out. The only reason for swapping this is if you want to provide alacrity, but more on that in the next section. The cooldown on virtues is essential because it will enable a close to 100% uptime on Rushing Justice. The second core specialization is Radiance. This empowers the condition playstyle by improving both the duration and damage of burning you apply and granting you Zealot's Flame every 10 seconds on critical hits. Also, Virtue 1 is renewed upon kill, which is just too good not to have in an open world, where you kill lots of enemies. This allows you to spam Virtue 1 to rush from enemy to enemy and keep it up as long as you kill stuff quickly. Aside from that, it increases your power, crit chance and ferocity, so it further enhances the portion of strike damage dealt. For open world, you're typically better off running Inner Fire, because it provides a reliable source of fury. Last but not least, we'll be using Willbender of course. With the traits of choice, Willbender increases your Condi damage, makes Willbender flames apply burning, grants movement speed and swiftness on activating a virtue, reduces the cooldown of weapon abilities whenever a virtue passive triggers, and further increases all damage you deal upon activation or passive trigger of virtues. The trait Lethal Tempo is essential for your damage. It grants a stacking effect that increases all your damage. It's usually easy to maintain since your virtue passes will trigger often, but you need to stay on the offense to do that. Tyrant's Momentum, the Grandmaster trait, will improve Lethal Tempo's modifier and increase the duration of Rushing Justice, which is essential for maintaining it. With Alacrity and when running Virtue Specialization, the cooldown of Rushing Justice is reduced to 8.25 seconds, with a duration of 8 seconds. So you can reach a 95%-ish uptime when using it off cooldown. Restorative Virtues can be swapped for Holy Reckoning in Open World because that grants a nice amount of Self, Might and Fury. Restorative Virtues is responsible for the dynamic style of the rotation, as I said before, by reducing weapon skill cooldowns every time your Virtues trigger. If you want to provide Alacrity, you need to use Phoenix Protocol. And that brings me to how to provide Alacrity on Willbender. Willbender is a niche alacrity spec because it doesn't provide a lot of support on top of it. Only some regeneration and might. Which is why it falls short of other specs like Mechanist or Renegade, which have a much larger amount of utility built into their toolkit. Nonetheless, you can use Willbender to provide alacrity while dealing decent damage. You need to change three things for that. Number one, you need to use Battle Presence and Virtues. That way your passive effect from Virtue 2 will be shared with nearby allies. Then, you need to use Phoenix Protocol in Willbender. This removes the heal from Flowing Resolve, but increases its duration and makes it grant regeneration and alacrity as a substitute. With Battle Presence, these two boons are shared with nearby allies on trigger. Number three is, to maintain alacrity, you need some boon duration. It's best to just swap in a few Ritualist pieces, use Toxic Maintenance Oil and slap on a Concentration Sigil instead of the Torment Sigil. This also means though that instead of rushing justice, you will have to focus on maintaining flooring resolve. You won't be able to maintain it fully, so you can alternate between that and rushing justice. All of this comes at the cost of around 30-35% to of your overall damage. In the final part of the video, I wanted to provide guidance on the rotation, as always. The rotation is pretty simple to pick up, but still fast paced enough to remain engaging. Most of this is based on support hero's beginner will bender guide video, so a big shout out to him. 
I also link that video in the description. The opener is pretty simple. Since Lethal Tempro provides a stacking effect whenever Virtues trigger or you activate them, you can precast Flowing Resolve and Crashing Courage to gain stacks of it before engaging. Then use Rushing Justice and Zealous Flame as the first two skills, but only the initial cast of Zealous Flame, not the second. Then cast Purging Flames, and by that time you should have two stacks of Zealous Fire available, cast those right after. Then use Symbol of Punishment and Cleansing Flames as the final two skills of the opener. After the opener, the rotation is full-on priority based. Number 1 is always Rushing Justice. Number 2 is Purging Flames. You should be able to use Purging Flames after every second cast of Rushing Justice, since you use them right after each other in the opener and the cooldowns match pretty perfectly. Priority number 3 is Zealot's Flame and Fire. Keep in mind that Zealot's Flame doesn't have a cast time and can thus always be cast as soon as it's ready. Just wait with throwing the torches until you have used Rushing Justice and Purging Flames if they are ready to use at the time. The cooldowns of Zealot's Flame and Radiant Fire will diverge eventually, so just use the two casts of Zealot's Fire when they come up. Priority number 4 is Symbol of Punishment and number 5 is Whirling Light. The lowest priority overall is assigned to Cleansing Flames. Only use it when all other skills are on cooldown for around a 2.5 to 3 second window so you have some wiggle room. It takes a bit of practice to learn the windows where this fits in. If you accidentally press this and Rushing Justice becomes available during the channel, you can cancel Cleansing Flames by activating Rushing Justice. Now that's it, you're basically just pressing stuff off cooldown and win. The rotation is pretty easy to use and quite forgiving for mistakes as long as you keep Rushing Justice up on cooldown. Alright, that is it for today, feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, I hope this video was insightful for you and made you want to try Willbender, see you next time and happy burning the heretics.